thank you so much for uh, joining us, Dilip. Truly a pleasure having you on Brand Equity. Great being with you. So, Dilip, 36 years, right, uh, of high design yeah. um, and what a brand it is. But I just want to go flash back a bit and, you know, before I ask you all my business questions, okay. uh, I want to talk to you about, uh, you know, how high design came into being because, uh, you know, I believe you grew up in the Aurobindo ashram. Yeah. So, you know, um, for the outside world, uh, the Aurobindo ashram, Aurovel Pondicherry, you know, it's very cut off in a very, you know, different nomadic way of living. So given that, how did you think of, uh, you know, looking at creating high design and making it uh, the brand it is today? Well, you know, when I came back from America, I just finished my PhD in international affairs. And the last thing on my mind would have been to be a businessman. I hated businessmen. Wow. Well, I was totally anti-business and it was just a hobby. I mean, I'd been involved in America in the counterculture, you know, being a hippie, I had hair down to here and all that, you know. But I loved working with leather, it was just beautiful. And the hobby is just making one bag and another bag and creating the design part of it, the creative part of it, uh, was a side hobby while I was working with Oroville in creating the community of Oroville. And it just kept growing, 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 and one day it just took me over. So you're saying you had really no real ambition to create this large Indian, you know, handbag brand uh, called High Design at that point in time? If you told me that would happen, I would have stopped right away. <laughs> okay. No, I had no ambition for that. Given the fact that business has not been that great broadly because, you know, we've just coming out of, you know, a somewhat depressed time uh, and, you know, most retailers you speak to, uh, you know, were pulling their uh, hair apart because, you know, suddenly from this once a year sale phenomena, uh, most retailers had to keep, you know, do this two times or three times sale cycle to get their product moving, right? Uh, in such a scenario and also given the fact that we as Indians are you know, so price sensitive, right? Um, uh, we're, we're yet to evolve and come to the stage where, you know, I will buy this brand because, you know, I, I, I'm a believer of that brand. You know, we're, we're quite experimental in, in our tastes. Uh, how, are you, how, how, how has the situation been for you in terms of footfalls in your retail stores? Uh, you know, there are Indians and then there are Indians. I mean, we never did a single sale until last year when we first did our end of season sale and that was only on styles that we were discontinuing. Okay. All our core styles which account for 65% of our sale have never been discounted. Right. I mean, I just don't believe in it. Right. I think this, uh, you know, when LV invested in us, you know, we looked at them as people, you know, they've never had a sale. I mean, how do they become the world's greatest luxury brand? You know, sure, everybody else does discounts. Everybody does it. But does that mean that we all have to do it? I mean, I don't see reason for that. At and, all. and how have you seen, you know, your growth year on year, store by store? I mean, uh, you know, has it been, uh, you know, at a healthy rate or have you also seen turbulent times like other retailers have? Um, I think we've had very good like for like sales, which means same store sales. Um, I think last year when we saw a, a drop in that, but we still had like a 9% uh, like for like growth in our stores. Um, but of course, e-com impacted, you know, the, uh, the multi-brand stores more than our own stores. Sure. Our presence in multi-brands did get affected. Um, but because e-com grew by 240%. Sure. I mean, that was, that was just phenomenal. Sure. Um, however, I'm not sure that, you know, even on e-com, for example, e-com did surprise us with the discounting. Yep. And I got caught off guard. Yeah. So now we stopped all discounting of our core styles on e-com. And oh, yeah. I haven't seen any impact on their sales. Their sales still continues to grow really well. Um, and I think our EBOs and our MBOs have started again. On, I wouldn't be surprised if we go back to around a 15% like for like. Nice. So Dilip, I mean, just looking at the e-com revolution in India, uh, uh, would you say that the sales you get via e-com uh, is a very significant portion of your entire revenue pie now? Um, it's, grown, uh, it's grown very substantially. It's grown by 240%. Right. But it's still, um, it's nowhere close to my EBOs. You know, and we never expected to. 
we would not want a product to be just there and discounted and sold. You know, we want the consumer to come and see what's about this product, what's special about this, what is this, you know, for example, with Amazon, we're running a story on masala bags. And we not only talk about masala the color, we talk about masala in Italy, we talk about how it's so rich and how the leather is made and so on and on and on and on. I we want the stories out there. I and we wouldn't go there without it. You know, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your, your multi-brand stores. And, you know, you talked about uh, how you think that will also see a revival. In fact, I believe you're launching, uh, you know, um, HDN. Uh, for uh, shopper stop and lifestyle, yeah. right? Which will be exclusive, and their designs will be exclusive. You won't see yeah. them here; you'll see them only there. Why would you do that, Philip? Well, I think uh, to some extent, I would say it was a defensive thing uh, because when you have e-com discounting marketing so much, um, EBOs have an amazing experience. You know, we try and build more of experience. Uh, what does an MBO have? And MBO, what it has is a huge client base that walks in, right. large footfalls it has. So we're looking at, is the customer base different there? Is India getting segmented more than it used to be before? And I think, yes, it is. And I think what we want, remember, in, I say MBOs, we're the only leather brand left. Everything else has all gone China synthetic. All right. you know, they all look the same. And you know, it's looking more and more same, and it's all out of China. So what is the story we have to tell them? I think what we decided is that the customer is there is a little more mass, a huh? little bit less involved in the stories of high design, even though we'd want to tell them increasingly there too. Um, but So I think we're building a brand there, HDN by high design, which is a little bit uh, price-wise, a little bit lower. Fashion, it's more fashion and less you know, the story of vegetable tanning and this, you know, I all that. You. It's still it's there. more high street. Yeah, it's a little bit more high street, a little bit more fashionable, a little bit more mass in terms of its taste, and uh, possibly not as classic. I get you. That's what we are. I get you. Uh, you know, talking about, you know, your product expansion, right? So today it's not, the story is not about handbags ju or just handbags. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, leather accessories, it's... Uh, sunglasses which is odd <laughs> and, and and now footwear i hear right um uh, why would you move away from your you know core proposition um remember when i first started i used to love making footwear oh also. okay so i used to make bags and footwear i would make anything i could put my hands on shoes you know there you are um where in india do you find for indian women Footwear that is leather, first of all, you know, is all synthetic now. Okay. So we're really looking at something which is comfortable, which is made out of vegetable tan leather, so it's not carcinogenic, you know, and it's comfortable. So you can, you know, my customer is largely professional now, more career oriented. So that's the story we want to tell them. Dilip, if you can tell me candidly, what's what's the you know five year vision for? high design and for you, I mean, what are we going to see, apart from footwear, of course, uh, what are we going to see in new uh, hip and happening, uh, you know, from your stable? I think um, a couple of things. I think we want to get ourselves established in certain markets internationally as a serious, credible person in the same field. Which markets are these? Well, I would personally love to see that happening in the markets we're already there, obviously. Yeah but also extend them to areas around India. You know, I want to be a credible player in Southeast Asia, you know, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, sure. and that area, you know, the Middle East area, and parts of Africa, Eastern Africa, and other. I think we want to be a credible player there. You know, we want to be, when people think, oh, well, you know, we want to buy a bag, I want them to think of us. Now, we don't see them as being, you know, like such a wide range. We see ourselves with a very specific, strong story on natural, you know, handcrafted, you know, things that we see are not coming out of other, out of the Far East, especially China yep. and all that. On that note, truly a pleasure, Dilip. Thank this you very much. Really wonderful. Thanks. Well, while you ruminate on Dilip's life and business philosophy, it's time for a short breather. But coming up, it's yet another MCN that's on its way. 
This time, a joint venture between UK-based digital content creator Diagonal View and Indian content company 120 Media Collective called Superfly.